make way for adventure, they will be here. All right, welcome to episode number six from chapter 14. And in this episode, we're going to cover sickle cell disease. Now, sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that is found in people of sub-Saharan African descent. So the Sahara Desert, if you remember, is the northern part of Africa. The lower half of Africa, or actually pretty much the lower two-thirds, is uh, a lot of rainforest. you got the savannas, etc. So it's going to be people who, who live or are born in that area. Um, they're going to be the ones who ha- could have sickle cell disease running through their family tree. Now, this is a result of a point mutation. In fact, one letter is changed, okay? And so that's only going to affect one single amino acid. So if you looked around the last screencast where we had cystic fibrosis where an entire codon was missing, this one we have uh, a point mutation where only one letter has changed. So instead of having an entire amino acid missing, we have one amino acid that gets changed. Okay. Now this will affect hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen in your red blood cells. And this will cause your red blood cells to have the wrong shape. Now, this occurs under acidic um, situations. So when you're exercising or doing something vigorous and you're, you're, you're really kicking in your mitochondria to produce some ATP and you're creating more CO2 from the Krebs cycle, your blood's going to get slightly acidic. And that acidity is going to cause the protein hemoglobin to change its shape into, think of like a half moon shape, all right? Now, this allele shows codominance. Now, remember, in codominance, the heterozygous individuals, they're going to express both alleles, okay? Now, the homozygous recessive, now, it doesn't, when you have codominance, you don't really have a dominant and recessive, but I'm just using these terms to make it a little bit easier for you to understand so we can tell the difference between the alleles, okay? So, the recessive allele would be the one that would give you sickle cell disease in this example, okay? So if you are homozygous for the sickle allele, your red blood cells are going to be mostly affected. In fact, all of them will be affected. If you're heterozygous, then half of your red blood cells will will have good hemoglobin. The other half will have bad hemoglobin, so you're only partially affected. And then what we're calling homozygous dominant in this case, none of your alleles have the sickle cell, or none of your red blood cells are affected because your homozygous good. So in other words, you have the good allele for perfect hemoglobin, okay? Now, even though people with sickle cell uh, disease, they typically don't live long enough to reproduce and pass this on, this allele is relatively common because the heterozygous individuals have resistance to a, a, a malaria. So we call this the heterozygous advantage. And this is why this allele has been propagated through family trees because heterozygous individuals can handle malaria. All right, so let's look at the next slide and we'll show you a little bit better pictures and we'll show you demographics and then we'll also show you a Punnett square, okay? So I want you to look over here in this picture. This is normal red blood cells. Red blood cells kind of look like a bagel, but the hole hasn't been pushed all the way through, okay? Now, they're very flexible. See how it can fit through this capillary? Okay. Now, in abnormal uh, or sickle cells, in other words, these are red blood cells who have the sickle cell uh, allele in it. Their hemoglobin gets a different shape, and that causes these red blood cells to bend. They cannot flexible. They're not flexible enough, and they can't fit through these capillaries. So you see how it forms like a log jam? That's a problem for these individuals. Now, over here on this map, these are basically rainforest areas. So this would be the Congo forest. This would be part of the Ivory Coast. And then over here in India, this would be like the Ganges River Valley. Okay, These are areas where you have a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of swamps, and mosquitoes will transmit malaria. Malaria is caused by a protozoan called trypanosoma. Okay, Now, because of this high malaria areas, people who are heterozygous, they have an advantage because half of their red blood cells will be normal. And what's good about sickle cell is that these cells cannot be affected by malaria. The malaria protozoan will not infect these cells. But if all of your cells have sickle cell disease, you've got something worse than malaria to deal with, okay? So if half of your cells are sickled, you don't get malaria, but the other half are good, you can still survive uh, pretty well. All right, so let's look at a Punnett square here. And we're going to cross two individuals who are heterozygous. So they are partially resistant to malaria, okay? 
And so once again, I'm going to use an A is dominant. So that would be, we'll say that's non-sickle cell. And then we're going to use a little A, which would be the sickle cell trait. Okay. All right. So we got one heterozygous individual here. And these are the gametes from the other heterozygous individual. So now let's just, well, let's use a new color because we can. Oh! So you fill in your Punnett square like you've probably done a million times. Okay. And we'll see what we got here. All right. So this individual right there, this person has perfectly good hemoglobin. All right. But the problem is they can get malaria. All right. So they got a problem. The heterozygous individuals, they, they sort of have sickle disease, but not too much, all right? So pretty much they have no sickle cell disease, SCD for short, and they're partially resistant to malaria, all right? And then these individuals, they can get no malaria again, but they have sickle cell disease. So all of their blood cells would be like this, okay? So it's the heterozygous individuals who have an advantage. They don't truly have sickle cell disease and they're partially resistant to malaria. No sickle cell disease, but they can get malaria. No malaria whatsoever from these individuals, but they also have sickle cell disease, okay? So hopefully this helps you understand what uh, sickle cell disease is like. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>